Oh, my bad. <laughs> drinking this, by the way. Drinking this. For energy. But you know what? This color scheme kind of do remind me of something. You guessed it. Let's get into it. We are back with Lossless Skelling. I'm late to this update, but we here. They added a lot of things that I do want to get into now. As you can see, we have a whole new look here. This software is incredible. Like, I cannot complain about it. It's not perfect, but it's something different. Let's get into some of the new features they have, right? So right here, we have your normal fixed mode, right? But they added a different mode and it is called adaptive. That's right, let's get into adaptive mode. So the thing about adaptive mode is you can set a specific target resolution. Like you don't have to go by multiples. You actually can set your resolution. And what adaptive mode does is, let's say you have an unstable frame rate below the frame rate you want. Well, no matter how low it dips, it'll still kind of maintain your, your frame rate that you set here. You know what I'm saying? And I think that is wonderful. Now, they say it does add a little bit of latency, but I mean, if you're a content creator, you just need that steady or somewhat steady, you know, frame rate or whatever, this will work. And that's the thing about a lot of these videos I'm making and, and the combination of software is mostly for content creators and gaming content creators to be specific. It's not for the people who just want to just game and that's it. No, you don't want that latency, you know what I'm saying? But if you're a gaming content creator, you want your gameplay to look as smooth and as crisp as possible. And that's what I try to bring with these videos. So let's, let's drop down right here. We're going to go to flow scale. It's like a performance thing. So basically, if you was to lower it, let's say to 70, what it does is the lower you bring it, the lower it downscales and upscales from. You know what I'm saying? So it goes to a lower resolution and it upscales it back, right? But the whole key to it is the flow of the frames are better the lower you drop the number, right? So I usually have it about 90, 80, something like that, you know what I'm saying? But it works good, you know what I'm saying? So you drop it lower, you get better performance, uh, your GP don't take uh, as much of a hit, and <laughs> you got smooth frames, baby. Now, before I go with anything else, let me drop back up here to fix mode and show you a new feature they added. So, you know, you're used to the, the multiples, you know, five times, six times, stuff like that. Well, what if I told you you can do this? That's right. You don't have to do the set multiples. You can just be like, eh, 1.3 is good. That's all I need. You know what I'm saying? So if you getting, only can get a steady 50 frames and all you want is 60 frames, you can make that happen and you don't have to take that much performance hit on your GPU. And I feel like that is wonderful. This app is amazing, but we're not done yet. But I just want to bring it up again that this is a wonderful software. It's only $6.99 on Steam. So go pick it up and know I'm not sponsored. And you know I'm not sponsored because look at my channel. Ain't nobody sponsoring me. <laughs> but yeah, back to the software. So we go down here, right? I remember one of the updates, it was, a, it was a while ago. I remember them saying something about this capture API, WGC is the one that's compatible with Windows 11 2H2, 24H2, I'm sorry, 24H2. And, uh, but to me, they both seem to work. I mean, you have to play with it and see what works for your system, but they both work. But what I do know is, WGC has better performance, you know, less latency and stuff like that. So, you know, try it out and see. Another thing, I think I mentioned this in the last video, but uh, WGC capture your frame rate to half of your monitor's refresh rate. So if you got a 100 hertz monitor, it's gonna cap it to 50 frames and then go from there. So it's way smoother when it does that. That I do know about WGC. Over here at the scaling, FSR is what I usually use. You control your sharpness from here, and you also can enable an optimized version of it. I don't use it, but I mean, it will give you better performance for the cost of lower quality, of course. And once again, man, they got all types of upscaling methods. You know, use this program like your own custom DLSS or FSR, you know. You can control the resolution you upscale from, and that is the thing I think people miss. Like, you know, when you're using DLSS, you know, they have their set resolutions that they upscale from, and that's, that's the difference with this program. The same for FSR. You know, so you have your own custom one. You can, in game, you can set your resolution. If you don't want to do 720p or 1080p like the consoles do, you're going to be like, you know what? I want 1440p and I want to upscale to 4K. Well, you're going to produce better image quality doing that way. And you have the ability to do that using lossless scaling. And I can't say that enough. This is an amazing software. Once again, it is not perfect, <laughs> but it gets the job done. All right, now we have mode, we have auto, 
and this basically if you go to custom you will set the scale for it to prop in the screen if that makes sense i used to use this uh when i was watching youtube videos with it and um it'll help me crop in so it'll know which part of the screen to scale to but you kind of got to mess with the google chrome scaling also it's it's not worth it if you ask me but it's used for other things too um i usually just leave it on auto because i, I kind of found another way to do it and i'll show you that in a second but we're going to drop down to the aspect ratio so you got the ability to upscale just to the aspect ratio or to the full screen and the aspect ratio would be let's say you put it in a resolution that is six by ten right and you set it to aspect ratio it's only going to crop it just within the aspect ratio versus full screen it's going to stretch it over the full screen and i have played with that moving on sync mode we have default allow tearing and v-sync of course v-sync gives you the most latency default gives you i'll say medium latency and then you have off which is allow the tearing gives you no latency at all if you turn it off and you don't get any tearing that is a plus sometimes i turn it off sometimes i leave it on it is all up to you but for the most part i leave it on default right here at the bottom where it says gpu and display this is a very interesting feature and this is not new just like the rendering settings are not new if you have integrated graphics right and you have a dedicated gpu and you probably like i have no use for my integrated graphics well i'm here to tell you yes you do because with lossless scaling you can choose your preferred gpu which means you can let lossless scaling run completely off of your integrated graphics and not even touch your dedicated graphics that is amazing to me because first of all you have a use for your integrated graphics besides if your gpu go out and you need a display port or whatever but is it <laughs> I don't, it's just amazing to me. I'm sorry, I'm hyped. Must be this. But yeah, man, that is a good thing, you know. It's self-explanatory. Down here, you can have it running on any one of your monitors, right? So usually when you use lossless scaling, whatever monitor that you're scaling from, that is what you're gonna see the output, right? Well, you can output it to your next monitor. Like for instance, I use it when I'm watching YouTube videos just to see you know the uh comparison so what i would do is i will watch it on one screen like with the original content and then i will upscale it to another screen and i can see the side by side comparison and what i mean is when i'm using the frame gen because i use this for youtube for instance i have a 100 hertz monitor which is not much you know but it works it's better than 60. if i'm watching a video that's like 30 frames and i'm like you know what i want to see this video in 100 frames and I just, bam, lossless scaling. Now, when I'm watching these YouTube videos, I would enable all the settings that gives me latency because I don't really care because I'm not playing the game. I don't need response time, really. And uh, if you set it too much, it will have a slight delay uh, in sync of, of the audio and, and their word and their lips speak English. But, you know, it makes the frame smoother, you know, because it has to generate a lot of frames from 30 frames. So uh, you're mostly gonna be seeing generated created frames but it looks way smoother and plus with the scaling on you can use it as a sharpener it sharpens the image it looks way better you know so that's another feature back up here in rendering i want to point out some more things we have hdr support which is not new we have g-sync support which is not new those features within itself is just icing on the cake because i remember i only have a hdr 4k tv in my living room everything else in here is 1080p you know but i remember uh i was playing a game i had an azr and i turned on lossless scaling and it looked at like well that's because i didn't enable hdr support and a lot of things that don't have hdr support when you use it on when you're playing hdr it's gonna look shits you know so that is a good feature the g-sync support that is wonderful everything pretty much works out and sync up together when you're using lossless scale back up here in capture i'm sorry i'm all over the place man uh i have severe adhd man my brain is all over the place as a matter of fact that's why you haven't seen me making any more tech videos on my channel because it's just been a battle it's been a struggle plus i recorded this video twice it's the third time man <laughs> something always went wrong but let's get back to the video now that we're back in capture we're gonna check out the cute target because i almost forgot so we're gonna read what it says let's go back to zero we're gonna read what it says because this is a good feature also now if i just get it to pop up ah there we go okay zero unbuffered capture always using the last capture frame for the lowest latency however performance may suffer under high gpu load 
with an uncapped base frame rate. Okay, so with this, you want to have your frame rate capped. One, buffer capture with a target frame rate Q of one. Maintains low latency while better handling variations in capture performance. So that's like in the, in the middle. And then we go down here to two. Buffered capture with a target frame Q of two. Best suited for scenarios with an uncapped or unstable base frame rate and high GPU load, though it may introduce higher latency. Also the recommended setting for frame multipliers by two. Okay, we got it. So two is gonna get you the best looking frames but the most latency. One is in the middle, zero is just, it is what it is. Crop them put. Now the way I was using this was, you know how when you're watching like YouTube videos on the browser and Chrome is all around it, because when you want to scale this, because the scaling works when it's in window mode. When you have Chrome full screen, it doesn't count in window mode because that's considered a whole window, even though YouTube has its own little screen in there, right? So what I would do is I would take it out of full screen mode, hold control and use my mouse wheel to kind of get the edge as close as I could and then manually do it and then <laughs> enable the, the loss of scaling and it'll kind of upscale it better than me just full screening it and doing it like that because when you just full screen it it just sharpens the image a little bit but when you do it like that it actually scales it so that's just a tip if you decide to do that i don't want to do that no more it's not that serious uh i just use the frame gen and i'm fine with that or i just use the loss of scaling for sharp right over here where it says game profiles it's not your ordinary game profiles because let me show you what, what i mean you can go in here you can go right here to add the profile right game title let's see we're gonna put the uh, parasites sorry go to browse and then you can select the application file of the game before you press add you can press auto scale and what that does is when you launch the game it automatically enables whatever you have on that profile in lossless scaling so if you have just a frame gen the minute you launch that game and it detects it it's gonna scale it. It's gonna enable whatever you have. If you got the scaling, it's gonna do both. So that's an amazing feature to have if you ask me. Another thing that I use lossless scaling for is just for recording videos. And what I mean by that is, if I have a camera that only does 4K 30, if I use lossless scaling, that 4K 30 turns it to 4K 60 or 4K whatever, you know what I'm saying? It's endless possibilities if you, if you let your mind work. Like I said, I have ADHD, my mind is always working. So I just be doing everything with this, with this software. But another example would be if you have 1080p 30, you know, um, a way you can do it is now this is this is the the easy method, but it's, it takes longer. You would just record off your camera like you usually do, and then record it again in OBS through lossless scaling. So what you'll do is you will scale it in lossless scaling and then have lossless scaling as a game capture, right? It's gonna be scaling it and producing frames, but you're recording with OBS or Streamlabs, and then you have your footage. So, but if you got an hour's worth of footage, I don't know, man. There is a method that you can use in lossless scaling and record it directly from it while you're using your camera. I gotta remember how to do that. I, I haven't been doing this in a while, to be honest with you. So just play with it and, you know, try different things. So just to actually show you what I mean by a lot of this stuff I was saying, I'm about to record gameplay footage, video footage, and YouTube footage. So after that, just meet me right back here. So that's why I wanted to create this video for you on the top 10 cheapest ways to upgrade your gaming setup. I'll make sure to leave a link in the description to all of the items that we discussed in this video. And if you found any of these items helpful, or if you have any questions about something else in my setup, let me know. Another thing that I use lots of scaling for is just for recording videos. And what I mean by that is, if I have a camera that only does 4K 30, well, if I use lots of scaling, that 4K 30 turns it to 4K 60 or 4K whatever, you know what I'm saying? So it's so many, it's endless possibilities if you if you let your mind work. Like I said, I have ADHD, my mind is always working. So I just be doing everything with this, with this software.
Well, hopefully I got my point across with the footage I just showed you. I tried my best if it didn't come out right. Maybe I recorded it at 4K, maybe I had to record it at 1440p. Either way, it upscaled it, and that's the point. But I just wanna say thank you to everybody who's been in the comments explaining what I was meaning with these videos because with the DSR and lossless scaling methods, people are thinking that I'm saying, hey, it's gonna turn your monitor into a 4K monitor. That's not what I mean. And those methods are specifically for gaming content creators, right? Because we are the ones who really need that higher quality for our uploads. YouTube already compresses the hell out of our videos, you know? For instance, just to explain further before we get up out of here. <laughs> If you have a GPU that can't handle 4K, but you have a 4K monitor, but you need to upload 4K content, the DSR and lossless scaling method will work for you. Then you will go in your game and the 4K resolution will be enabled. But remember, you don't have the GPU power. So then you will drop it down to like 1080p, whatever resolution under 4K that you can get a stable 60, you will drop it to that. Make sure it's in window mode. You will turn on lossless scaling and it's gonna scale it to 4K or a version of 4K and you good. Now let's say you have a powerful GPU but you don't have a 4K monitor, you'll just use the DSR and enable 4K. But yeah, man, thank y'all for the love and support. Y'all be sure to follow my gaming channel, man. I have a lot of good stuff over there, man. I can just be myself, I can be free, man. A lot of entertaining content over there besides gaming, you know. Uh, if you're not subscribed to this channel, make sure you subscribe. But most of all, make sure you like because they help the algorithm push me out because they like, hey, they like this fella. <laughs> but this is BCP with BCP Tech Lab. And one day, I will hopefully have a tech lab. But until then, until next time, not until then, because that's going to be a while. But until next time, I will see y'all back here.